State of Affairs welcomes Regina Agia, who is president of Garden State Initiative. Good to see you. Thanks for having me, Steve. Tell everyone what Garden State Initiative is. Sure, it's a nonprofit think tank uh, focused on public policies on economic matters here in the state. Let's get to economic matters. One of the things that strikes me about what you've put out and your colleagues is that New Jersey's um, gross domestic product compared to Delaware, New York, Pennsylvania, we're behind. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, the U.S. How far? Well, we are half of New York and almost half of the U.S. So U.S. is growing at 3.1 percent. We were 1.8, tied because? for dead last. Because? Well, because we aren't, you know, really putting the policies in place that will encourage more investment from businesses and grow jobs and grow values here in the state. Governor Murphy is out as we actually do this program. I believe he's in India, part of a trade mission, going out there. I mean, he's out there promoting the state. Does it take more than that? Of course it does, right? We have to have an uh, economic environment as well as a regulatory environment that will be attractive to businesses because, you know, one of the things we all have to accept is we're in a dogfight right now, right, for both jobs and residents against the other states, and we have to be much more attractive than we are versus our near neighbors. What makes us less attractive in, in the view of your organization? Well, certainly the tax burden, right? I mean, we are at the bottom uh, or the bottom decile of every list of the cost of running a business, the cost of living, property taxes, you name it. So the cost to operate here is just, you know, falling behind really other states. So it's not, are you saying, Regina, it's not good enough to say New Jersey, dot, 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 open for business? That slogan just doesn't work? Well, no, right, because, I mean, as I said. Without the policies. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, the other states around us, right, look at the, the income tax rate in Pennsylvania, right, 3.3%. Ours is? Ours is uh, 897 governor, governor says we should raise taxes. By the way, we, I, we will get the governor, I, I assure you. The governor says we need to raise taxes on millionaires in order to fund public schools, public employee pension crisis, other state services, you say? Right. There are a lot of things we should be investing in, but we should be growing the economy to enable that investment, not continually drawing down on the current, you know, uh, incomes that people have. And, you know, New York, right, their corporate tax rate, 6 percent. We just raised ours, right? We have a surcharge on businesses now, 11.5 percent. By, by the way, what is it in Florida? Well, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, they don't have one. Just to clarify, they don't have one. Well, and Steve, I think you know, too, right, the number two state for out migration from New Jersey, Pennsylvania. Not, not, wait a minute, Florida's number, number one. Florida, one. Florida, right. Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania right across the border? Two. That's right. I mean, you can... So it's not the weather. <laughs> exactly. It's not only the weather. Exactly. You can stay near your family and friends <sighs> and have a much more attractive... Culture. Except we're not promoting that. Um, <laughs> let's do this. We talked about, you've talked about, it's called adding it all up. This is a path to saving $2 billion for what? And what does that have to do with our roads and bridges that are crumbling? <laughs> right. So we took a step back at GSI and really thought about what is the total spend in New Jersey on all government. If we add it all up, right, county spending, municipal spending, state spending, the total is $117 billion, right, all public spending. And we looked at certain subjects and said, could we find economies where we could save money but continue to provide great services in the state? Where are the economies? So our most recent report is on transportation, which is really roads and streets and bridges. And, you know, we looked at other states, again, competitively, you know, looking at other states. And in Massachusetts, they've done consolidation. They have saved them tremendous amounts of, of money. Of operations, right, of different groups that are performing plowing and maintenance on the roads. Pennsylvania did a, a P3, a private uh, public partnership, for rapid bridge replacement. And they believe that they're going to replace 500 bridges in 10 years sooner than the DOT could get to it in Pennsylvania. And the maintenance cost will be 40 percent less. So we can learn stuff from other states, and we should employ those learnings in our state and improve. So you're saying that just having a government agency do it itself, it may not, in, in, the, organ in the view of the organization and your research, is not the most efficient and effective way of getting it done. Well, I, I think there are lots of different ways to both plan and execute. But you're talking about partnerships outside of government, do Oh, you? yes, the P3. Yeah, definitely. Is there something I, slow about government you're implying? Um, well. <laughs> By the way, let, disclose, you know a little bit about government? <laughs> yes. Your previous position? Uh, I served in Governor Christie's administration, both as his chief of staff and the treasurer's chief of staff. But so, it's also elected locally in the township committee and board of ed. Let's do this. Um, what I'm curious about is not just New Jersey tax policy, but you mentioned regulation. Yep. One regulation that, in, in the view of your organization, gets in the way of, and by the way, a lot of these regulations, some other folks will say, contrary to Regina says, we need to protect folks from what business might otherwise do. Yeah. One regulation that you say is not not only helping the public, 
But it's hurting New, Jer New Jersey to attract business uh, or I'll, keep. I'll give you an example that a business uh, leader gave to me. Right? He was setting up a new subsidiary, and he looked to set the subsidiary up in New Jersey, Virginia, and North Carolina. And to set up an entity in our state, uh, in those states, I should say, Virginia and North Carolina, one was nine pages of information they wanted, and the other state was 14 pages of information they wanted. New Jersey, take a guess how many pages we right. needed. 57 pages of information Why? just to set up an entity. That's what the business leader was asking me. So oh, oh, I want to be clear here. You're saying that New Jersey, beyond the tax policies, beyond property taxes, corporate tax, income tax, that just setting up a business is more complicated because of the process itself. And, and devil's advocate, some might say, we need all that documentation to know what that subsidiary is doing so that we can, quote, protect the consumers, you say? I say other states don't, and they're prospering much more than we are. I think we can learn from other states. Have you had a direct conversation with Governor Murphy about his policies and how you see them? And I have not personally. I'd welcome it. So, Regina Gia is the president of Garden State Initiative. By the way, folks, go on your website, which we put up a couple times during this uh, segment. What can they find? Uh, all of our research, as well as we put out a blog and news uh, that's relevant to economic matters here in the state. And, and real quick, funding for the organization comes from? Both foundations and individuals only. We don't accept any funding from businesses because we really are nonpartisan and focused on economic matters. Regina Ajia, President of Garden State Initiative, has joined us. I want to thank you for being with us. By the way, check out uh, a column I write in New Jersey Monthly. We also did a feature on your organization as well. Um, Regina, thank you for joining us. This is State of Affairs. We're coming to you from the NJTV Agnes Ferris studio. Keep the conversation going. So join me on Twitter. Do you even know my Twitter handle? It's at Steve Adubato. I know we talked the other day. Uh, <laughs> check you out next week. Thanks so much. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 30 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of State of Affairs with Steve Adubato has been provided by RWJ Barnabas Health, NJIT, PSENG, the Northward Center, the Turrell Fund, supporting right from the start NJ. MD Advantage Insurance Company of New Jersey, and by Wells Fargo. Promotional support provided by New Jersey Globe, and by New Jersey Monthly.